Hey, family. How are you? How are you? Listen, everybody. Welcome to Listen with Tania and Wynn on another fabulous, amazing, blessed Tuesday. Yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. So excited. We're so excited. Yeah. So if you, um, this is your first time here, we first of all want to thank you for tuning in, uh, for taking time out to watch. We don't believe in the word coincidence. So if you're here, it's because this is exactly where God needed you to be, right, Wynn? <laughs> so for the listening world, for those that don't know us, my name is Tania Easterling. Um, and who are you, Wynn? And I am Wynn Briscoe, and we are sister cousins. Our dads are identical twins. So welcome. Welcome to yes. the Listen family. Yes. Yeah, so we, before we go any further, we always want to take a quick second and thank everybody for watching, for tuning in, for catching our replays, uh, for following with us and staying with us into this second season that we're in. Uh, this is episode three of season two, and we're so excited and thankful. Make sure that you have uh, like our page, that you turn your notifications on so you don't miss a second when we go live. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited. You want to recap last week? Last week. Ooh. Last week was powerful. Mm -hmm. um, it was a perfect segue into today. But I'm going to let you talk about it first before I jump in. Well, last week, our topic was on financial aid, because you all know on the show, we cover the different uh, themes. Every single episode so far has been with the letter F, uh, as in Frank. And so last week, we covered financial aid, and we had our wonderful show producer on, Danielle, and she was the, the special guest and the subject matter expert on financial aid to assist those who are looking for higher education financial assistance um, with your grants, your loans, your scholarships, um, and, and all types of funding options for pursuing your higher education. So it's a great episode. Go back, reconnect, and, uh, and then, of course, episode one in our second season, because that was episode two in our second season. Episode one was on forward uh, which was amazing. So if you are new to the Lucy family, y'all, please go back and watch season one. There was 16 episodes, all with the letter F, different theme every every week. And then, of course, we have two that have just happened in season two. And tonight we are on our wonderful episode three of season two. And you want to tell them what we're going to discuss tonight. We are. So tonight, in honor of what the world calls this month and the holiday that takes place in this month, um, we are doing Fearful versus Fearless. And this isn't about horror movies, y'all. This is about life. Are you living fearful? Or are you living fearless? And before we go any further, I just want to say, when I want to thank everybody that's been sharing our videos on their pages. Last week's financial aid, if you didn't, if you don't have a college or a high school student, but you know someone that does, share this with them, message them the link, send it uh, as soon as you can, because of course there's federal aid <laughs> deadlines, as we learned last week from Danielle. So. Make sure to share it uh, with every parent or even direct high schooler or college student that you know. So tonight on the Fearful versus Fearless, I am excited. Yeah, it's a Ooh. great topic and, and loving that it's along this week of people having horror and, and fear. Uh, but to know that fear is a real thing that cripples people 365. Uh, yes. And we're going to deep dive into that and to really help empower you and encourage you to to know that you can live a life uh, that's fearless. Yes. So let's even let's just jump in. So should we jump in with the scripture or with the definition first? 
Ooh, well, let's go with the word first and then we'll go with the definition. So I found one. You know, I love my different translations. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. So Psalms 112, verse 8, right? Beautifully written by David. And he's talking about God's children, just to give a context to the seven verses before verse eight. So in verse eight, he says, they are confident and fearless and can face their foes triumphantly. Mm. Talking about those of us, right? Right. Um, That have a heart for God and about things of God, right? That we are confident and fearless Mm -hmm. and can face our enemies triumphantly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I love that scripture. I was like, okay, that's good. Not just fearless, but confident and fearless. I love that each word matters with these translations. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's one thing to be, it's one thing to be fearless, right? Right. It's a whole nother thing when you add confidence on top of that fearlessness. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's a force to be reckoned with, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is who God says that we as his children are and should be living our lives. Right. Yeah. Right. So that was that was the first scripture. So you got a definition? Uh, yes. So the definition, um, according to Webster's, right, honey, it says the right. definition of, of fearful uh, is causing or likely to cause fear, fright, or alarm, especially because of dangerous quality. Mm. 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 So the definition of fearless is free from fear. How about that? (laughs) And brave is an example. So free from fear, bravery. Um, And I love that, the three Fs. It's three Fs, right, to describe um, what fearless is according to the Webster's Dictionary. So... Those are great. I love it. Um, I love the definition of fearful. Mm-hmm. That's really deep. Um, right. <laughs> especially the end part where it says, you know, causing or likely to cause fear. I'm going to mm-hmm. skip some of that, especially because of dangerous quality. Correct. And it's like, ooh, okay. Mm-hmm. So what are we deeming dangerous? That should be the million dollar question tonight. Mm. What are we seeing in our lives that's so dangerous that it would that it would cause us to be fearful? I mean, those are some serious um, adjectives there when you think about it, right? So mm-hmm. we're going to deeper dive into this, but to know <laughs> that people are who who are fearful, it does bind them. Right. And so it it, when you think about that, that fright, that alarm, right? There it's not just in their minds, it's also in their emotions. Like they it's it's a part of who they are when they do not release it and allow God to have them in true freedom. Um, you know, they are bound and and um it's pretty I mean, like it's saying, it's dangerous, it's it's pretty it can get to the point of danger, it really can. And I yeah. love that you just said that it can get into um, mm-hmm. their mind and yes. into their emotions because that's what our soul is made up of, right? Our mind, right. our will, and our emotions. And they have absorbed, allowed it to be absorbed uh, mm-hmm. within them, right? And so it's a choice. Yeah. Um, and so we're hoping tonight, honey, to get some people free. Yeah, yeah. And I love that we just talked about um, the soul, because the other scripture for tonight mm-hmm. was Isaiah 35 and 4. Right. Um, that in the, of course, the New Living Translation, that NLT version, that says, say to those with fearful hearts, be strong and do not fear, for your God is coming to destroy your enemies. Mm. He is coming to save you. Come on. And I love how that is in full present tense, right? Yeah. He is coming. He is. Not that he already came. He is. 
or that sooner or later he'll be there. It's like, no, it's his present tense. Come on, he is this coming tense. to save you, right? Yeah, but I love yeah. how it says, say to those with fearful hearts. It's speaking straight to the emotions. Like you right. said, that fear arrests in us. It grasps our emotions. Right. Yeah. Right. So good. Absolutely. Yeah. The next one says, uh, where God's love is. And this is, of course, 1 John 4, 18. Okay. And uh, it says, where God's love is, there is no fear. Period. Right. Okay. Period. God's perfect love takes away fear. It's a punishment that makes a person fear. Anyone who has fear does not have perfect love. Let me tell you. I the layers that, of lasagna in that scripture. Honey. I read that translation like six times because I was just like, okay, mm -hmm. there is so much there. Right. Because first of all, a lot of times we see uh, social media posts or a lot of people say, you know, faith over fear mm -hmm. or faith conquers fear. And it's like, well, actually, that's not what God's word said. So. Correct. Correct. God's word says his love mm. conquers fear. Correct. And I was like, that is so powerful that we have to recognize that when we are fearful, we are questioning God's love for us. And also to know that everything that you might see out and about that is, you know, what we call um, common vernacular, right? Or even what might be out as slang or terms or, you know what I right. mean? Yeah. Um, you know, that's not, it's not always the truth. And so sometimes we have to warrant against continuing the conversation of what might be a popular slogan uh, and mm -hmm. test that thing of, wait a minute, is that what God's word says? Because that's not what God says. It doesn't say faith over fear, right? It says, no, it, there is no fear, right. no fear. Like there is no fear in God's love. So operating in God's love, understanding that the word is no, you know, it's not one over the other. It's it's not even faith over fear. It's God's love over fear. So, uh, you know, just making sure that we have the right perspective uh, and the right sourcing of what conquers fear. And recognizing that it's God's love and fear that can't coexist at all. Not doesn't say anything in that scripture about faith no. or the lack of faith or mm -hmm. anything. It is specifically to God's love mm -hmm. and how if we don't, if we have fear, then that means we're not receiving God's perfect love. Right. And I really right. had to sit in that thing. <laughs> I had to sit in that all week because I was just like, mm. wow, God, what areas of my life Am I not allowing your perfect love to reign? That's it. That's it. Right? Because yeah. if they can't coexist and one supersedes the other and we've given space and opportunity for fear, that means we've rejected receiving God's true love. Right. Yeah. And when I read that scripture, it took me, it honestly took me all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Because mm. I was like, fear didn't even exist. No. And so after they both bit the fruit, whatever right. you want to call that fruit, you're not mm -hmm. even going to put a, put a label on it. <laughs> whatever you want to call that right. fruit. Because anything from an apple to a tomato. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when they took a bite of that fruit, right? And it was at that moment that they said their eyes were open Correct. and they were ashamed and they went and hid. Right. Out of fear. And I'm like, Right. Yeah. And and as God said to them, who told you that you were naked? Right. <laughs> they, went, they went they went and hid. Right. Now we're trying to use random things to cover ourselves up with. Right. Like cause right. They, obviously, you know, <laughs> they were free to frolic. There was just them, too. OK. Uh, and, <laughs> so, and so God said, who told you that you was naked? Like, how, how did you get this epiphany? Right. And where did you get the word from? <laughs> Where did naked even come from? Think about it. Right. Because if this right. is how we were how, naked and clothed. Where did clothing come from? Like, it wasn't even a concept. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no. but yeah, all that came from fear with, and shame. And, and all no way. Of it. it's where yeah. it first originated was in that moment. Right. And at the same time, them 
questioning God's love. Mm-hmm. I'm like, there it is right there. They yep. question God's love and fear entered into their lives. We question God's love and fear gets to have a party. Mm, mm, mm. In our emotions. And like you said, in our mind, Correct. right? In our heart, all of it. Yeah. All Cause it's, it. it's a seed that, that gets planted little by little, you know, it's not like all of a sudden just off the gate, there's fear, you know, there, there are things that you can become fearful of or something that might al- alarm you quickly, right? A dangerous situation, but that's different than fear. You know, fear is something that you have received within your emotions. It's how you conduct yourself in a fearful way. It's different than you being startled or you you having a, a, a moment of being alarmed or concerned. Okay. Those are those are all temporary things. People aren't typically temporarily in fear. That's not that's not typically how fear operates. Fear typically of those it operates typically has dominance over their life. It's seldom just a one or two situational thing. Yeah. Yeah. And like you just talked about how um, being fearful. So Mm -hmm. some of the ways that that can look like in our lives, some of the ways that that can show itself, right? It can be through anxiety, intimidation, you know, being a worrier. Right. Right. You know, even just like fear of being wrong, fear of looking stupid. So many, I mean, so many ways um, and so many tricks that the enemy uses. Let's just call it what it is that the enemy uses. It's, it's true bondage. It, it, it is. And, and the, the mm-hmm. last scripture, Psalms 34, 4, right? That right. talks about where he's explaining, hey, listen to my testimony where he's just like, let me tell you about this right here. This is <laughs> our modern day vernacular. Let, let me holler at you. Okay. He's like, he cried to God in his distress and God answered him, right? And God right. freed him from his fears. And when he's using the term free, that is an indication that fear was bondage. And so when you think about the various ways of, of fear and being fearful with all of those different um, ways or attributes or descriptions or methods, they're just all different terms of bondage. Right. Right. So true. So true. Um, and I love that even David said he freed me from all my mm-hmm. fears. Come on. So implying that there was more than one. Sure. So there, it is totally possible to have more than one thing in your life that you are fearful of. Right. And the enemy knows it. Hmm. And it's like gold in his hands. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, you're fearful of that. I'm going to just use that in every area of your life. Exactly. And if, and if you're watching this and you may say, well, I don't relate because I'm not fearful. Then again, look at the other uh, bedfellows that I like to call it, right. That are interchangeable. Are you a worrier? Do you worry? Do you have anxiety, right? Uh, Are these things some of the attributes? Do you feel like you're always hesitating? Do you feel like you're yeah. doubtful? Do you procrastinate? Are you a, a control freak? Whatever you, you know, whatever, because there's so many right. attributes, right? It, 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 right? it puts on so many different outfits, right? Fear, fear has a closet, honey, full of outfits, okay? And it just yeah. depends on if it's morning, noon, or night, of what outfit it's going to wear, but it's for us to recognize that the root of it, right, under it is still fear-based with fear mindsets, uh, fear energy, and and fear emotion. And so however you want to dress it up, let's just call it that, it's still at underneath of it all, whatever wardrobe it is you've got on that day, it's right. still a fear mindset and it's still within your emotions. It has control over you. Yeah. And I think just like anything else, it's a choice that we make. Yes. It's a choice that we make of, okay, when I wake up this morning, am I going to put on God's love Mm. or I'm going to keep putting on this worry, this worry outfit. 
Am I yeah. going to put on this worry jumpsuit? Or am I going to put on this procrastination hat? <laughs> Come on. Or what about these hesitation boots? These hesitation boots look good. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Are we putting right. on, you love to always talk about um, the armor, right? And putting on the armor of God. Oh, are yeah. we putting on the armor of God? Or are we putting on these bedfellows of fear every day? That's that's a great analogy. Right. And what and what is not surprising is how the enemy has even taken fear mm -hmm. and turned it into an entertainment factor. Because look at everything this month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every horror movie, everything, right? Is right. straight is straight rooted in fear. It's rooted in fear. And there's a and whole so, industry around it, right? Like, right. Think about it. It's not just during Halloween time of the year. You see it surface a lot more, but the horror industry uh, within itself, you know, whether it's books, whether it's movies, whether it's any type of a media content that is That's horror correct. based, right? Um, the thrillers, you know, even in some of the songs, right? It, it <laughs> This is not a new thing, right? So, you know, shout out to Michael Jackson, the thriller, you know, that was an right. amazing video. But again, still, that was a fear based, right? Uh, where all the characters, even in that, had some type of semblance of, of fear. And so mm -hmm. um, it, it comes in so many platforms, whether it's, you know, someone who you know who's a worry wart or someone who likes to, you know, listen to fear-based music, whatever, you know, however those avenues, trust me, the enemy knows what yeah. you are attracted to, right? It knows the bait to attract you. So if it's if it comes in the form of entertainment, then it will be that. If it comes in you always finding the need to worry or to complain, uh, then it will come that way as well. You know, so he yeah. knows the bait, honey, the attract right. what and, you like. And the reality of it is, right, is that both God's love mm -hmm. and being fearful, they're both contagious. Mm, so totally. it's like, okay, what am I, what am I spreading? Right. What am I spreading right now? Am I spreading God's love when I mm. interact with people, when I interact with my family, right? Or am I spreading fear? Am talk. I spreading my worry? Am I spreading my procrastination, right? Or my anxiety? Yes. I mean, look at what this world has gone through over this past almost two years. You talking Listen. about the spirit of fear having a field day. Mm. The media alone, come on. Come on. And I'm not knocking it because people who know me know I don't knock it. But I do selectively pick and choose of not to consume it. Yes. Um, and, you know, I consume my content how I consume it. But I do not watch the news. I'm sorry. The news is more, in my personal opinion, it's more fear based rhetoric than it is actual news. Um, and so I, I pick and choose for what I receive based on me. But it's true. It comes in so many forms. And just talking with some of the medical providers, that anxiety has gone through the roof for prescription drugs, yes. even for the young people, right? Where it's like now they're more suffering from anxiety and depression. And you're like, wait a minute, when we were preteens and teenagers and young adults, wait a minute, I don't remember anyone in our circle Right. And so they might have had their own <laughs> mental health challenges. But now, yeah. right, everything is anxiety. And it's like, but is it, though? But is it, though? OK, come on, because now when you've got a parent who's a worry wart and now you've got a child who's a worry wart, like because, again, it's contagious and you live in an environment long enough, especially with a parental, uh, you know, circle around you that yeah. has these attributes that ripple effect is going to rub off on the next generation. Yeah, sure. it's it's about taking a, a serious inventory of, okay, mm -hmm. what does my model look like? Mm -hmm. What am I modeling? Because someone is always watching. You know, not all of us are blessed to have children yet. Everyone's mm -hmm. not blessed to have children yet. But someone is always watching. Absolutely. You are always someone's example. Right. right. And it's like, OK, what am I spreading? Right. Am I spreading God's love? Am I spreading that 
that confidence, right? That mm-hmm. confidence from that first scripture, that fearless confidence. Is that what I'm spreading? Or am I spreading the anxiety, the worry, right? And mm-hmm. then how even how we talked about back from episode one of this season on the forward and we talked about being stuck. Right. And if there's one thing that'll get you stuck, it's, it's fear. being fearful. Absolutely. It's being Absolutely. fearful, you know, will keep you, keep you paralyzed. There I say paralyzed, not just stuck, but keep mm-hmm. you immobile. You know, and most of the time it's not even anything real. that God is telling you to do. Right. Because you're like, well, what if nobody receives it? Or what if nobody likes me? Because you're stuck in the hypotheticals. <laughs> right? How many people do we know? Oh, my goodness gracious. I shut people down. And I don't mean to be rude. But when you call my phone with some hypotheticals, I, I cannot. I, mm-hmm. I cannot. And I, I understand yeah. uh, some folks need to run all scenarios. Okay? Um, understood that has a place. But um, mm-hmm. when you are stuck in the hypothetical... Um, I, I, you know, I cannot, I cannot. What did God tell you to do? Go do that. Go do that. Okay. So clearly God has exhausted all of your hypotheticals. Go right. do what he told you to do. Okay. You know, you are here worried about this, this, and this, that it hasn't even happened yet, but you stuck in, you know, what I'm come on now, let, let it, let it go and go ahead and follow through what he told you to do. You over here worried about these outlandish uh, not even, well, you know what I mean? Once again, going back to the Garden of Eden, right? And yes. the serpent sitting there saying 50 million what ifs to Eve. Well, Come what on. If? Well, what if? And it's like, okay. Well, she should have brought him back with some what ifs. See, you look at that he, he didn't have you and I. Because we'd have been, we'd have given him the rock of the head and been like, well, what if? Well, what about you? Well, what if I'm not talking to a serpent? That would have been my what if. <laughs> Well, what if? Having a full blown conversation with a snake. What if I don't listen to a snake? Just have a conversation with a certain snake of any kind. I'm going to be like, where's my bag? Where's my bag? Bag, where you at? Why why are you talking to me? First of all, you know what I mean? Like, let's just, let's just get back to that. Like, what? Mm. No, no. Yeah. I, that whole fear, living in fear and having you stuck. Mm. and paralyzed it's a real thing for some it is a very real thing and we're not on here tonight discounting that by any means get all the help get all Mm. the prayer all the therapy whatever all the healing whatever you need to get yourself unstuck Mm. you know to get past that fear right and embrace god's love because, that's because it thing. has a root. Yes, it has a root. And to know that healing is needed for the root of whatever is causing right. that fear, right? It's again, planting these seeds. So what was your seed from your childhood that made you fearful, right? You find mm-hmm. that a lot in adults, the things that they're fearful of as adults are encounters that they've had as children. And right. so, you know, address that. Let's get past it a little, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Um, So in talking about um, God's love, right? And the importance of us just embracing that in our lives. Right. We can, we truly can say to ourselves all day (laughs) and sing the reckless love song and everything else over ourselves, right? But if we have any area in our lives where we are still Hmm. in fear, in that doubt, in that hesitation, in that worry, there's an area there that God's love isn't covering. Hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not letting him in in that area. That's good. You know, Um, and tonight we're just talking, having an honest, real conversation about living in a fearful place right and how you don't have to go out the end of this year living like that you do not the end of this month right Right. is halloween that some people celebrate honey you don't have to go out the end of this month in fear know that there is freedom and god has set you free 
If you don't know it, you are free. Let, let us let us be the first to tell you. Tania and I will let people know all day long. Oh, we are free. Okay. Free. On so many levels, we're free. Okay. So I need no to one change told my you. license plate to say I am free. Honey, honey, if you didn't know you was free, let us be the first to tell you that you are free. Okay. okay. <laughs> so let's talk about when you had um some songs. Yes, really right, right, right. So fear. I love music. Uh, I'm a I'm a music head, just like you are. And so you always provide the scriptures. And I was like, you know what? Tania's on it. This season, I'm going to provide songs and you provide scriptures. I did good by giving you the last scripture. Woo -woo. That was great. You, you know, it's like you pulling did. up the stack there. Awesome. But, uh, but I, I love the variety of music. Um, and so um, here's just some inspirational music that has different themes regarding uh, being fearless and, and, and addressing fear. And so uh, the one of them is by uh, Torin Wells, who did a great job um, and with that, with Jen Johnson and Chris, to be able to just break out the song, What You're Famous For, right? And so that's, mm -hmm. that's not a new song by him, but I love that particular rendition. Um, and so that was a great one. And it starts right out with, you know, there is no fear. That's the first few lines of the song, like period. Let's just establish it. Okay. So right. watch that. And um, Jasmine Murray, I love this lyric rendition that she has where her song is completely about being fearless. And so mm -hmm. if you need some encouragement some days, it's a lyric video, watch it, read the lyrics, learn it, digest it. And to understand um, that God created us to be fearless. This is great. So good. And then the last one, is by Zach Williams, and uh, his song is just straight off the cuff. It kind of has like a little country twist, and I like it where he's just like, fear's a liar, point blank, period. <laughs> and let me tell you all the many ways that fear is a liar, right? And so he yes. breaks it down for you through the song. So so those I are just three song. different renditions there to just let you know quantitatively, you know, through music that, you know, really reaffirms the scripture. So whichever works best for you, you know, to receive, Scripture, song, together, both together, they work well, uh, where the songs reaffirm God's word. Yeah, I love that Zach Williams song. And you write, yes. it does have a little country twist. It has a it, country twist. Where but, the word, like, but the words yes. are anointed. The words are powerful. Absolutely. Yeah, he, powerful. he's straight to the point. Fear is a liar. And so it's just like, let's not even allow it to even have dominion in our lives, right? Let's just call right. spade to spade what it is. Right. So... So we have truly spent plenty of time talking about fearful. So let's get to fearless. Absolutely. Let's get to fearless. And yes, hey, Jen, beautiful Jen. Yes, Fear is a Liar is amazing. Yes, a great song. Yes, hey, Jen. Yes, isn't it a great song? I mean, that's it something is. I feel like um, could be an anthem at some point, right? When you really need something to be concrete on and and there's days where you waver and you might say you know what what i'm feeling in my emotions is one thing you know let me go back to what i know it is it's mm -hmm. it is not the truth right mm -hmm. well it's a big it's a big talker fear is just a big talker come on right it has it's, it's a it's a huge dog with literally no teeth <laughs> right right <laughs> it talk it talks a good game yeah but it's like, okay, really? Really? Am it's, I, am I going to like really live in this? No. What would you it, say? It's like, it's like going to uh, the carnival or the circus, remember? And you would walk through the clown house that had the mirrors, right? Where you yeah. thought you were seeing something. You thought you were experiencing something. Clearly, yeah. right? It's like, no, no, you're not. Yeah. Yeah, and it can and it can feel very real, like that house of mirrors, right? It can Correct. feel very real. You know, it has a great way of making you feel as though, okay, this is mm. really happening, or this is really about to happen. Right. And it's like, okay, let's get to the point of fearless. Right. Let's get to the point of fearless. Let's get to the point where God's love talks a much louder true game. Than the fear that's in the other ear, right? Listen, listen, because because one voice has to be louder than the other, right? Yeah. And it's like, what voice are we allowing to have dominance 
in our domains. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And and we know that from the fruits. So Come if on. we're spending so much time <laughs> worried, right. stressed out, anxious, yeah. we know which one we're giving more, we're leaning more towards here and now. It's like, okay. You know, and God's like, hey, I'm waiting. I'm waiting, waiting for you to just embrace my love that's going to see you past all that. Mm -hmm. I'm just waiting. It's a choice. So, yes. Every single, every single time yeah. it is a choice. And uh, for the record, I know I'm not perfect in it. I haven't arrived in it. So right. I don't want anybody tonight thinking from a place, well, she must be per no, no, hunty. No, <laughs> no, no. it's Not a conscious true. decision day yes. by day, moment by moment, right? Of Sometimes minute by minute. I'm a, you're at a crossroads. What's the choice? What's the choice right now? How am I going to respond? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes that's minute by minute. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Seriously. So the fear less, right? So some examples mm -hmm. can be taking risks, living in faith, right? Trusting in God and his path for your mm -hmm. life, which is that trust. Honey. One thing to live in faith, right? Because faith is the expectation. That trust, though, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. trust is, God, mm -hmm. you know what? No matter what the outcome is, I still trust you. I still love you. I know you still love me. And you're still God. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> All of that. Ooh. All of that. <laughs> All of that. Right. And that's the part. That's the part of fearless mm. that God wants us to embrace, right? Come on. Mm, that, mm, that mm. yeah, I'm willing. I am willing to step out of this boat, even though this boat is all I've ever known. Right. But I'll step right. out of it because I know you made the water that I'm about to step on. Hmm. There's that confident fearless, that confident fearlessness, right? That says no matter what, I know you got me. It's also understanding that there's layers to that. Um, yeah, taking a risk that that's one thing, right? Living in faith that's another thing, right? This is like a step stool, like this is like a stair step. Mm -hmm. Trusting in God and His path for your life, honey, that's okay. So, I know that's a journey that you know that again, all of us are on our own journeys. Um, but that, you know, goodness, <laughs> I can't even articulate what I'm trying to say. And y'all know I ain't a short of words, but to, there's layers to that one line right there of, yeah, let me go back to taking taking a risk, right? <laughs> All step day one, long. Let the me first go, step. Right, right. Let, let me go back to taking a risk because at least <laughs> I know in that, there's some level of control. If I can be honest with you, mm. Ooh, did we say mm. it? You right? just said the C word. I you just said it. it. But, but when you, that taking that risk, it's like, okay, at least it's a risk that I'm aware of. I'm conscious of. I'm, I'm making this conscious decision, right? There's some level of your involvement, all mm. right? Which then works you up to living in faith. But when you get to that top step, of trusting God and his path for your life, forget about it. Like the taking a risk at this point is like, it's like baby food to steak. It really is. It's like, okay, you know what? You know, now that I'm an adult, you know what? Kindergarten wasn't that bad. Naps and snacks, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> it's going back to naps and snacks. You know what I'm saying? Like all, nope. all day long. I'm, I'm, I'm about that life. I'm, I'm, yeah. Yeah, and it's not, and to use your analogy, it's not even just any state. We talking filet mignon. <laughs> Trusting in God and his path for your life and doing it fearlessly. Because let's not forget about that, right? Doing it fearlessly. My goodness. It's, 
He got his eye here in the deep, honey. I'm telling you, I'm I'm like, where where is the 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 mat again for the nap? I, I'm okay with just laying on the floor. I'm a, I'm a, I can make myself a little mat with my coat. What can I can I just lay out a little sheet like you had in church? I'm okay with that too. No, okay? no, you don't even need a mat because it's it's the complete and utter willingness to look crazy to the world. Been there, done that. Doing in order that. to be obedient, <laughs> in order to be obedient and trusting God, and we've both sure. been there and continue to be there. We both continue to look crazy. Come on, and I, I'd rather look crazy to the world mm, mm, mm. and have continue to have God's hand of favor on my life. I know we're going off topic for a second, but I'd rather look crazy Say to it. the world. Say it. And continue to have God's hand of favor on my life. Girl. Girl. Because it's the crazy faith that God Listen. responds to. Obedience. Period. Point blank and period. And it will have you out here looking whole crazy, building ships on dry land when there ain't been no rain and more or less a flood. It will have you looking plum crazy. Okay. You got it. Exactly. Yes, but like yes. Peter. Come yes. on. Like Peter, like Noah, like Joe. Like, listen, it's all of them looking plum crazy. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Being obedient. That's you and I out here looking plum crazy. Okay. I know when I have to deliver a message to somebody, hey, you know what? Shout out to the folks that I have to deliver messages to. And if you haven't gotten one yet, it's okay. It might be coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but listen. <laughs> When is going to be obedient out in these streets? Okay. And it long. might make her look a little crazy to you, but what is not going to do is cause me to be obedient. So sorry about your uncomfortableness. Yeah. Sorry, not yeah, sorry. That, <laughs> yeah. All day, all day long. Right. No. Um, and that, I feel like it's that taking risks, living in faith. Yes. Trusting God. Ooh. And his path. Come on. I feel like it's like going from layers, like you said, from kindergarten to getting your doctorate degree. And dare I say a double doctorate, because by the time you at the place of trusting God entirely, not Come just on. in some areas, because let's talk about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about fearless in the areas that you have the confidence in. Because we all that. have those areas where we that. have the confidence mm -hmm. and like, oh yeah, yeah, that's nothing. I can, I can do that in my sleep. No, yeah, we want you out there. No, we're talking honey. about those areas that the moment somebody or God says, "Hey, I need you to do this," you clutch them fake pearls. Like, wait, what? I, I don't think I heard you clearly. I don't think you were talking to me. That was my week. <laughs> that was my week. I was like, wait, what? Sir, come again. Poor boy. No, it's talking about even being fearless, fearless in trusting God in those areas, in every single mm -hmm. area of our lives. Can you imagine if every believer lived that way, Honey. what this world would look like? Yeah, that deserved a pregnant pause because... Ooh. I can't even imagine. Can't even imagine, right? What would be the impact, first of all, if we all lived in obedience and fearlessness? One generational impact. Generational. Because we'd be raising, we'd be raising children that the model for them was what is what is fear? What's that? Right. I'm fearless. Right. I'm fearless because I, I have God and his love for me. So there isn't anything that he tells me to do that I cannot do. Mm, mm, it would literally mm. be just that simple. There isn't anything that God tells me to do that I can't do. Right. Right. There's no boundaries. There's no restrictions. Right. They're boundless. Think yeah. about that. Is that you truly are boundless. You have unlimited possibilities when you're thinking about being in God's love and being fearless. It. it it takes the realm of possibilities just, right? Just, and we, we think about examples like this. When you think about 
some of the former innovators, right? Or we think about uh, you know, Disney or some of these other, right, where their minds, right, they're, they're, they could, they had, it was boundless. It, it was far, you know, just out there where, you know, they weren't living in the box. They didn't have the constraints in their minds or their emotions um, for the things that they even took on and created, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and hey, Joyce, shout out, Nikki, I see you. Hey. <laughs> And yes, you, yes, I'm glad you're in agreement. Yeah, that, that whole, just even trying to wrap our minds around that even our emotions wouldn't be. Right. There would be no fear, even in our, even in our minds or in our hearts, you know, in a world like that. Wow. It's hard for me to actually fathom that. That's sad for me to say. But I'm just as being adults, honest. I, I think that's why. Right. Mm -hmm. As children, children are able to really do so much more because they don't have the fears that adults have. Nope. They don't have the mental and emotional restrictions that, you know, that's why you have to tell them that the stove is hot more than one time. Right. Because, because you know, they're like, oh, no, we can just keep touching it. Right. So they have this unlimited. And so their faith level also with that right? Their trust level. All of those things are just unlimited um, because they don't have the fear and the restriction uh, that comes sometimes with living life a little and sometimes with not trusting God fully, okay? Uh, and could, and that so, be, could that be just maybe why Jesus said, you need to come to me like as a children? child? Exactly. Because of their fearlessness. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, they take, think about it. Kids take everything at your word. Right. Face value. Totally. Right. Without, like, without okay, God, you said you're going to do it. Okay. You know, um, when, when our daughter was younger and I love it because she would, she would pray for our healing. Right. <laughs> she would literally pray over us. And then she'd look back at us and she'd be like, okay, you're better okay. now. Right. And I loved it because it was like she was expecting immediate an immediate answer to her prayer. She was just like, so you're better now. <laughs> you know? And I'd be like, I, I love, I love your fearlessness mm -hmm. and your faith. But it was just like, okay, I prayed, so you're good. Right. You know, moving on. <laughs> right. You might have still felt some residue, but it's okay. She already you it's already done. Right, it's already done. It's already done. It's just you had to, you're waiting for the manifestation. Right, and if only us as adults could apply that to every area of our life. That's it. Right, that's it. That's why Jesus always welcomed the children. Right, it was the adults who were like, uh, you know, you know what, you know, we're not trying to have these kids around. Right, the disciples were always trying to find a way to shun right the crowds. And, yeah. uh, you know, no, Jesus was like, no, let them come. Let them sit. You know, I'd rather deal with them than y'all. That's what that was my interpretation. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they're willing to receive. The children were willing to receive. It was always the adults that were the judgmental critics, right? Uh, that he felt like he had to convince. No, no. You sit down and you're, you're explaining to the children, hey, this is what love is. This is what faith is. And they're receiving it like a sponge, just like children do, right? Yeah. They're receiving his love. Right. How about it? Right? Which Not questioning his love. Which is something we, as adults, mm. struggle with. Woo! Question they have love. no struggle problem receive receiving love. God's love, yes. parental love, right. any type of genuine love, right? Right, right. Zero problem typically receiving that love. Isn't in that, that question? Hmm. It is. Yeah. Hmm. That was, yeah, that was powerful. Oof. So mm -hmm. let's talk about us. Ooh, our, our, our flashbacks <laughs> and our favorites. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> oh, Tania, Ooh. what does living in fear look like in your life? Hmm. Being fearful, what does that look like in your life? Debilitating. Mm hmm. Debilitating. 
definitely had me and at times in certain areas of my life Mm -hmm. still has me sometimes stuck, paralyzed, um, hesitant to where I'm even questioning. I think the enemy has stopped giving me questions and I picked it up on my own. Okay. With my right. own questioning, but right? Like, well, I can leave. She got it, <laughs> right? Because see, the enemy is not he, right. As long as he know you can keep yourself in your cycle, right? Exactly. He's not even he, he's he's long gone onto somebody else. You keeping yourself right. in this, <laughs> right? Yes, and I agree, Joyce. Yes, exhausting, mm-hmm. it is tiring, right? Yes, that um, worry, yeah. And feeling that even in my physical body. Like I can tell, because for me, that worry, that fearfulness, that shows on me physically. Mm. That's not even just an emotional or a mental thing. I even take it on physically, which I'm sure some other people do too. Yeah. But that's what um, that's what it has in the past and at times still in the present can look like if I allow it if I allow it to fester that long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I would say um, what it has looked like in the past, because I haven't, I have not been in that season in a very long time in my life, but I can say what it, what it looked like years ago was the lack of freedom. And so living in that bondage, right? Not living in God's freedom. Um, is what it, it definitely looked like uh, in my life. And so that's, um, honey, getting free has been an amazing thing for sure. All right. Are you saying you are fearless in every area of your life? I don't know that I'm consciously fearful. I think I, I think sitting with that and asking God to show me areas where there's still fear, worry, doubt, anxiety, um, procrastination, right? All those bedfellows, um, sure. right? There has been, yeah, it's still very relevant. Um, and I'm I'm grateful that it has been diminished, but there are still areas where um, if it hasn't been doubt in others, that's been gone. It's more sometimes even doubt in myself and even questioning God and being hesitate, hesitating on his direction sometimes because of overanalyzing. Um, so no, I'm not saying that that's been a, a, a full thing, but the freedom in that process of coming into that fearless of, of coming into freedom, right. Releasing, uh, those bedfellows little by little, um, is such a freeing thing. So that that's where I'm coming from for me is asking God to reveal it and to acknowledge it and to say, okay, God, release me from you know, these bedfellows of fear, whatever clothes they want to put on in my life. Right. Yeah. So what does, what does living fearless, what has that looked like in your life? Mm. (laughs) Wow. I think when we, you and I did the episode on freedom with Kim, like that was so real, right? It, It was, it it was relevant, especially, you know, for what we were personally going through and still going through. So fearlessness and, and understanding that that correlates with God's love and his freedom. Yeah. Um, that what that looks like in my life is is amazing freedom. Um, just hmm, God's love and God's freedom. That's what that looks like in my life personally. Yeah, yeah. What does it look like in your life? Ooh. The courage to do the crazy things that God is telling me to do. The courage to do the things that may truly may not make sense to me right mm-hmm. now. Right, right. But the courage to actually do them. And may there be a tiny bit of fear at the beginning of it sure right the uncertainty is real but that not being the stopping point for me right 
and it being okay is more important for me to be obedient. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it's more important for me to be obedient right now um, than to allow the fear to be that that door stop. And it's yeah. me just walking in it and owning who I am. Like I talked about earlier, um, talked about last week with Mama Sanchez, right? Mm -hmm. About my four words and my purpose. Yeah. And willing to just walk that out no matter what it looks like to anybody else or even to myself. Mm -hmm. What that looks like. Like, and you know I love what, that you said not even to yourself because like in Lauren yeah. Nagel's song where it says you say, right? Where it's God, right. I, I, you, she personally might feel a certain kind of way about herself, but God, you say this about me, right? So even yeah. when you said even about yourself, that's so key right there because you may not even feel it about no. yourself. No, no. And I and I didn't at first. Yeah. Personally, me personally, I did not. That took that took some that feeling. took some feeling and some yeah. time of sitting with God and embracing, yeah. once again, embracing his love for me in that area of my life. Yeah. This is who you say I am. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. this, this is who you say I am, then okay. Right. <laughs> That's right. who I am. And I'm okay with that. You know? And even okay. if we're not okay with it, it's still who he says we are, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's that's mm -hmm. that trusting God piece, right. right? That even when we're not okay with it, well, God, I, I trust I trust what you said. I mean, <laughs> I mean. You said this is who I am, so. Right. It's okay. Yeah. There's no arguing against it, right, at all. Yeah. So that's, take it for what it is, whether we receive it within ourselves, right? Right. What God says is supreme. So we have to go with that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what that looks like. Um, and you guys have been so great engaging with us tonight. Thank you yes. so much. Keep the comments coming. If, even if you have questions on anything that we said tonight, or we need to further explain something because something didn't make sense. Or you were like, mm. oh, that was really good. Can you go a little deeper? Yes. Post it in the comments, whether you're watching this live right now or later on our replay, we'll still respond to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so just keep the comments coming. Let us know tonight what's really resonating with you, what your takeaway from tonight's going to be, because we'd love to hear it. Um, and so when mm -hmm. I know we got questions, <laughs> I know we got questions for tonight. Honey. Hun, honey, oh, oh, oh! Shout out to Danielle. She, our producer. She says she wanted me to sh to to put out our fearless flight. So today I'm I'm representing my Terp University of Maryland stuff. I don't know if you guys can see it, um, but tonight we today we toured the University of Maryland Center, and of course it's a flight center, honey. And of course, fearless flight is the theme. Can you read that in your direction? Yeah. Right. And so um, that is the. Uh, that's the slogan for the center. And I said, only God would have us tour the center on the same Tuesday of our theme being fearful versus fearless. So I told the director, give me some stuff. So he gave me some great stuff on fearless flight, mm -hmm. right? And how yes. you're taking off. Oop, there we go. We bring it back in. We're taking it <laughs> off in flight, right? Uh, with being fearless. And I thought, oh my goodness gracious. Like what is the odds? of this. So um, shout out. Thank you, Danielle, for that reminder. And shout out to University of Maryland, who uh, had the yes. audacity to put a slogan of fearless uh, as a mantra for, for one of their, their units and divisions. So I thought that was awesome. Yes. Ooh, so what's your question? Because I know you got one. <laughs> so the question was, oh, 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 honey. Honey, don't I always have questions? Every week I got questions. I know you got one. Every week, question? every week. Why is a fearful and a fearless life not only contagious, but hereditary? Right? Who you know who mama always worried about something, who birthed a bunch of kids who are always worried about something? Yes. What is that about? Why? Yes. Why? And sometimes it skips generations. 
So you may even be wondering, like, okay, where is this coming from? Because I mean, where I didn't see my parents have any fear like this or be worrying all worry. be up all night worrying about anxiety. Stuff. Come on, any word, right. any bedfellow you want to use to describe it, honey. What's the bedfellow, and why is it contagious? I think I think everything has the capability of being contagious and hereditary. Okay. The things of God and even the things not of God, like we're mm. talking about tonight. Right. Both right. have the capability um, to impact the lives of others. Mm. Right. God put us in the earth to be an impact. So <laughs> what kind of impact are we leaving? Well, what's your ripple effect? Right. Because at the end of the day, do you have the ripple effect of being fearful or do you have a ripple effect of being fearless? Right. Are your kids suffering from anxiety and depression like you or are they right. out here conquering the world and being fearless like you? Because, again, there is a ripple effect to whatever stance we take. OK. And to know that when you when you know, if you are bound in some of these emotions and some of these bedfellows that we're talking about tonight, you know, this is the time to take a pause, seek God about it. And then, of course, seek some resources that can help walk you through some of these bedfellows so that you're not perpetuating them on within yourself, within your right. family circle, within your friends. Right. Are you known among your friends I mean. um, as the one who has the anxiety? Right. Always worrying or procrastination. And Are you the one that always that, shows up late? And is that your circle? Is your I mean, circle a bunch of warriors and right? procrastinators Come and on. hesitators, right? Because you are who you surround yourself around. There so you who go. are you surrounding yourself around? Are you surrounding yourself around people that are at least on the first ladder? They're at least on that mm. first one of risk taking. Like they're at least out here trying something new. Or trying something that they were like, ooh, well, you know, I had a dream about this. I think I'm gonna give it a try. What is your circle? Right? Because that's also contagious. Correct. Right? How are you gonna get rid of something if you're hanging around everybody that has the same thing? <laughs> what, what did Bishop Jake used to say? Y'all all on the same porch. You gotta get up off that porch. The same porch. Come on. That's so that's where that is, where you know, they have now proven with medical science that nine times out of 10, the traits that the parents have uh, with anxiety and depression, right? Very common uh, do of impact the children. And it's not necessarily that things are hereditary as in travel through DNA and blood. No, it's about the circle and the environment that you're in as well. So um, be mindful. Yeah. Check your circles, y'all. Check your circles. I, look, we got the same brain because I was literally about to say the same thing. We do have the same Check brain. Your yes. Circle. <laughs> it's circles, it. plural. Check your yes. circles, plural. That's business relationships, mm. personal relationships. Check yeah. all the circles. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Personal, professional, family and friends, right? Who who are my top 10, 12 people that I engage with and what are their characteristics? And do right. they do they resemble fearless characteristics or do they have fearful characteristics? And and you need to govern yourselves accordingly, honey. Uh, yeah. you know, on how you proceed moving forward. And if you don't know how to do that, go back and watch episode one in this season and, and learn how to govern yourselves accordingly. Okay. Right. Right. And nobody's perfect. So you won't find perfect people no. to no. surround yourself with. We're just saying don't stay find in people it. like yourself that aren't paralyzed or stuck Correct. in it. Right. Yeah, because stuck uh, attracts stuck. Yeah. Yeah. If they at least can acknowledge, ooh, something God told me to do. Mm -hmm. ooh, I'm nervous about that. You right. know? But with prayer and and love and encouragement they're like okay that i'm gonna go do this. correct <laughs> those those that's good people's right there because they're that's not willing different. to say they're stuck in it correct see and stuck is a little different than cycles so we correct. haven't talked about that before but we need to delve a little into this because these characteristics too stuck sometimes can be a momentary, you know, like we talked about on that, on that previous episode, a pause. It could be a pause. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a permanent thing. Right. So 
Are you stuck there? Or is this a cycle as in it is repeating itself? That's what we're talking about with hereditary and contagious. We're, yeah. That's a repeat thing. This is a generational cycle or it's a cycle that maybe you're in like a hamster wheel and you're not yeah. coming off of this cycle. That's a yeah. little different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I got another question for you. Well, so why then are fictional superheroes mm. always viewed as fearless? Mm -hmm. Typically viewed mm -hmm. as fearless, but we don't see ourselves that way. So true. Those who love to watch the comic book movie series, right? Uh, and they're like, oh my goodness, you know, right? Again, you have you have Marvel, Marvel, and you have DC, right? You have what, whoever has made it or Disney, but you have these superheroes who we deem visually, right, and emotionally. Like sometimes we even go to bat form, girl. You know what I mean? These right. are fictional characters. Like my superhero is better than your superhero. They're fake. Okay, let's just right. establish that. <laughs> but we're going to bat over fake characters, right? Who we feel is more fearless, right? Who we feel is more dominant if they were in a battle together, who would win, right? And we don't, we don't, we don't see that of ourselves. When we have the ultimate superhero, which is God, he is the superhero. If we are to model any superhero, God is our superhero. So he's how, the superhero, he's the cape, he's the weapon. On. I mean, there is no that, other superhero. That, he is the only superhero. Right. So, so how are these fictional characters, how have we given them that much dominance and that much, um, con you know, that much power, if I could say that, right? Um, being fictional uh, to, to, for us to view them as being fearless, right? That they can just go out and they can just, they can conquer, you know, they're, they're out here just, you know, slaying right. the enemy, whatever you want to call it and whatever, you know, because it's always different, right? And whatever uh, uh, environment that they're put in, uh, whether it's something that's modern or whether it's something that's futuristic or something that's uh, back in oh, when you had kind of like the old uh, days of things being even superheroes where it's caveman style, right? Or, right. or, or <laughs> you know, the Greek and the Romans, right? And we're thinking about them as superheroes, right? But it's, so no matter where they are on the, on the spectrum, uh, we view them in such a way that we have never viewed ourselves. We, we never. And to know that God says that he, we are in his image. So if God is the superhero, okay, the, as in the only one, and we are made in his image, how do we see ourselves as fear how, how do we not view ourselves as not having some level of fearlessness okay understanding that we are still growing and on our journey no doubt um no one has reached perfection but we never see ourselves on the level of a fictional character how, how is that explain that it to is me. it is the constant struggle hmm. between our flesh and who god says we are yeah that's real it's that constant struggle it is the constant <laughs> struggle that as right. long as we are breathing, we are in that constant struggle with flesh, mm. our sin, nature, however you want to, however, whatever phrase you want to put on it. Right, right, right. right. And our, the likeness of God that we are mm. is too constantly in conflict with one another. We, we in our own. We in our own superhero battle with him, yeah. right? Right, because our spirit is fighting our villain, the flesh, at all times. Girl, now that's our real. Spirit, our, our spirit has the cape on Ooh. and the weapon, right? Got all that. It's mm -hmm. that flesh. It's that flesh, though. Mm. Mm -hmm. And we're living in a world full of villains. Right. Wow. Everybody in their flesh, in their feelings. That's coming right. up in a couple of episodes. Mm. <laughs> everybody, Ooh, honey. everybody living mm. in their flesh and in their feelings. And, you and see both it. are wrong. And both are wrong. Both. both are wrong. Both. Yes. So, yeah, nobody can live. Nobody can live with the cape. Mm -mm. Can't. Mm -mm. No, not at all. At, at least not permanently. 
No. Not permanently, no, you, right? Because it's that constant, no. it's that constant That's battle. That's it. That's it. That constant battle. And and no lie, when somebody rubs you the wrong way, hmm. you got a choice in that moment. Am I gonna put my cape on? <laughs> Honey, how am I going to respond? Or are you about to get this villain? Are you about to get this clap back of a villain? <laughs> Which which <laughs> character am I'm about am I about to show you right and now? And we have to make a decision moment by moment. Y'all don't understand. <laughs> like y'all really don't. You really don't. You know, bless you, but the you don't. The struggle is real. <laughs> now that's the real struggle right there. <laughs> am I being am I being God's oh. superhero or am mm. I being my villain right now? Man, which one that's am I living? That's so real. Yes, yes, that is so good. That's so good. Okay, so this next question is if fear is the opposite of faith, which is faith not. is freedom. <laughs> right? Okay, so this correction to that, right? Do people who fear desire the cycle of bondage? Hmm. Hmm. Desire is a strong word. It's true. Answer the question. Desire is a deep word. That's a heavy word. Understood. Understood. Now, sometimes mm -hmm. do we like the mud that we're stuck in? Mm. We mean, may not like it, but it certainly sometimes becomes comfortable. And it's like, okay, I'm not crazy about <laughs> I'm not crazy about this mud that I'm stuck in. But Correct. It's at warm least, and it's at least I know what to expect. It's your mud. At least I know what to expect in this yes. mud. Yes. Because if you ask me to step out of the mud, mm. I don't know. There's that what if. That I, don't, I don't know what that's going to look like. Yes. Outside of this mud. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the cycle and the desire. Mm. The cycle. Some may. Some may I genuinely think. desire that. Yes. Mm -hmm. I I know some folks. I know some folks. Mm. That cycle of bondage has revealed itself. So you are no longer unaware. Yeah. Okay. That's the best way I can say that. Okay. Uh, it has been made made known, as the old people said. It's been made known. Okay, that's I, I had to bring it, I had to bring you back on. It's been made known, right. and now that it's been made known, it's a choice. Okay, and so now it's so much a choice that um, you know it's a bedfellow that you depend on. It has become your identity. Um, you know, you don't want prayer. You don't want counseling. You don't want medication. It's a crutch that you you just you, you're like I'm not letting this crutch go. Right? I I, I got these crutches. And you know we are gonna walk. You got these and, crutches. And you have named it. You've given it a name, honey. So it's just oh, that's just how I am. That's the honey, name you've given it. It's come just on. how I am. That's just my personality. Mm, 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 mm. No, that's your, your villain. Identity is no, that's your villain. <laughs> come on. And you just like Linus in the blanket, right? It's the comfort. You wouldn't know what it was like and, and you don't desire freedom because freedom would cause you to have an, a totally identity. Your identity would have to shift, okay? Yeah. Because you've been known all these years as a blank. You've identified yourself all these years as a blank, right? And so what does freedom look like from that cycle that bondage, if you say, you know what? No, I'm healed. I'm free. Mm. Then, wait a minute. You don't have the Linus blanket anymore. Now, now, how do I, how do I function outside of the identity that I have created for myself? And how will other people wow. receive me? Because I have made this my soapbox and my identity, right? So how will other people receive me? So now there's fear that's keeping you in the cycle of bondage because the fear of being free scares you more than the freedom itself, right? right. 
And right. it just now perpetuates. We got a perpetual cycle. Right? Honey. It's, it is truly, um, it reminds me, I know we've been, I know we've been joking about the, vi the villain in mm -hmm. the superhero within, but yes. I feel like the perfect example is like the Incredible Hulk. Because yes. he was the only one that his villain was within internal. Yes. And he fought him constantly, right? Come fought on. Fought himself constantly. Yes. Right? Yes. Battling that identity mm. of who am I? Come on. Who am I really? Mm, mm, mm. And I feel like that, that right good. there is a true That's cycle. Good. That's good. Of constantly of who am I? Who does God say I am? Yes. Yes. Because that's the only true wheel that matters. Mm. <laughs> Who does God say that I am? That's good. What I love God that analogy. Me? That was because think about it, even in the fictional character for the movie's sake or the comic's sake, um, when they needed Hulk, honey, he had to conjure up that. Come on. See, right. let's talk about that. See, because right. that's a real thing. He was a real man, allegedly, in the comic books, right? Yeah. And so he didn't live in that every day. It was only once his anger and his fear and his rage, right? Those bedfellows of fear. Okay? Mm -hmm. Once he conjured that up. Right. But then now he's exploding outside of himself. Come on. And when the people needed him to conjure that up. See, that's a whole nother story. See, they wasn't, all the time it wasn't even always him. No, 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 so, no. Come mm -hmm. on. Let's talk about that. When the people yeah. depend on your bedfellow, does that not keep you in a cycle or what? Come on. Because he didn't that, want it. He that hated goes, it. That goes he right back it. to what is your circle even expecting mm -hmm. of you? Come on. Do they expect you to always bring the what ifs? Come on. To their situation. Do they call you? Yes. You intentionally for mm. you to give them the 50 million what ifs. Are you the person who's the devil's advocate who always wants to come on, right? Because that's what we call right. it, right? I'm I'm the, right. You're the devil's advocate. You're you're the realist, right? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Let's call these bedfellows what they are. Let's stop putting clothes on what the enemy already knows is fear-based. Right. We should all desire to be that one, mm -hmm. that person that our friends and loved ones pick up the phone or they text and they say, hey, yeah, I need encouragement. Right. I need I need your faith right mm -hmm. now. I need your faith. Like I need, mm -hmm. I need your faith. To partner with my faith, because yes. this is what God is telling me. This is who God's telling me I am, or this is what He's calling me to do right now. Mm. And and I need your faith. Come on, I don't I don't need the what ifs. I got somebody else for the what ifs. Come on, <laughs> right now I need I need your superhero in your cape mm. 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 to mm. help me put my cape on and embrace God's mm. love. That's right, it. going back to that love. Embrace God's love that tells me who he says. Hmm. That's so good. That's so good, y'all. Y'all give us some feedback in the comments. Let us know yes. what you think about that. But I mean, it's on such a level when we think about this topic and we think about just from a media perspective and a, a, a movie perspective, right? I know, I know I will never watch Incredible Hulk again the hmm. same. God and gave we me watch that. a lot of Marvel in this house. I know Less. I will never look at him the same. Up. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Right? Because he's the only one that had the internal. Correct. Correct. And, he, and, what, and what's amazing about that is that he hated getting to that point. Right? Mm -hmm. From what I understand of it, he does not desire to ever bring the Hulk out. Not so. Ever. It, so again, now it's a choice that he has to consciously make based on the situations that he's put himself in around the people that he's put himself around because otherwise he's okay with just being the regular guy, right? Yeah. So are we in situations and in environments with people that we have to bring these things out? 
right? Do we have to conjure these emotions and these, think about it, because that's exactly right. what he has to do in order to get to that point to then be a quote superhero. Right. Or fake it. Someone else's life. Or fake it. Because if you Come need on. to be any, if you have to be around a group of people, Come on. fake being worried, or mm. fake being anxious, Honey. Or, fake, or fake procrastination, it's like, okay. Right. It's time. It's time to re-examine the circle. Hmm. Every support group is not supportive. I'm gonna just <laughs> put this out there, and I'm gonna leave that. Okay. Every that support is group talk. is not supportive. Are <laughs> you in some codependent groups, relationships? Okay, where everybody there is is not striving for for better, for healthier. Yeah. Okay, for God's truth. Y'all, this is look, we we in the last quarter of the year. Please, okay. When you when mm -hmm. you think about the 2022 coming around the corner, please, y'all, think about your circles, your environments, personally and professionally. And I'm sorry, these all of these support groups, they're not on God's truth. They 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 mimic themselves as if they are, but they are still keeping you in your mm -hmm. cycle of bondage. And you know why? Here's how I'm going to tell you how you can identify that. Mm -hmm. Are you free? Right. Do you continue to go to these sub sub groups, whatever you want to call them, okay, uh, week after week, month after month, and at what point do you become free from them? Free from the bondage that had you there, okay? The, the theory of once is something, always is something is a lie. No. Okay. Right. So, so evaluate these things. Please, y'all. This, this, yeah. this is cousin Wynn and Tania giving y'all a little <laughs> bit of God's <laughs> truth tonight. Because uh, again, we you're keeping some things people keep you in and some things you keep yourself in. And and does that group weigh you down when mm. you when you walk away or step away or hang up the phone or whatever it is when you yeah. are done your interaction? with that person with those people how do you walk away feeling mm. that will also tell you a lot about okay are they empowering walk away you? feeling heavy yeah yeah <laughs> like okay why am i drinking <laughs> or why do i why am i why am i feeling sad yeah upset? you know or do you walk away motivated do you mm. walk away encouraged empowered do you walk away empowered Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm pulling my cape out. I'm dusting yeah. it off. Right, right. And we doing this thing. We doing this thing. Come on. We doing this thing for God, no matter what. Mm -hmm. I might be a little scared, mm -hmm. but we're going to do this thing. I mean, do you ever get freedom? It, are you ever free? Got to think about it. You got to think about getting off this, this wheel. And, and the last question I'm going to ask you, honey, is do we truly understand the ripple effect of being fearful or being fearless? Because again, everything, every action or inaction, let me say that as well, uh, has a ripple effect. Do we understand it truly? Not always. That is not always our first thought mm. is who is this going to impact? Right. What is it going to impact? How? And how? Mm. And for how long? Ooh. And mm. how long? The who, what, where, when, how, why, the per people, places, and things. Yeah, that's not mm. always our first thought. Mm. Lord. Because if Lord. it was, this world would be a completely different place if everybody <laughs> took a moment to think about the ripple effect. What I'm about to say out of my mouth, what I'm about to do or not do. Mm. Right. What is the ripple effect of that? What's the ripple effect of me living in fear? I'm just What's saying. What's the ripple effect of me living fearless? Honey, yeah. I gave my testimony this morning when I was up with the Lord. Okay? Mm -hmm. That was a ripple effect of shifting from, a, from what other people wanted me to stay in because yes. they were fearful. They wanted me to stay in their box and in their construct. 
Well. And fearless is what I chose based on God's obedience. Yes. Yes. And, and so I gave choice. and I gave my testimony ooh, last week in that conversation mm. with Yvonne. Mm. About that, about that. I had I had what I thought was my yes. purpose. Come on. And God was like, no, that's a <laughs> gift and a talent that I gave you, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's not your purpose and it's not who you are. Come on. It's what you do. It's Isn't one it? of the things you do and Correct. you may do it well, but it's not who you are. Mm -hmm. So there was only but mm -hmm. so far I could even go in the fearlessness of that. God Correct. was like, well, it's just what you do. It's what you do. Right. So there was even a stopping point in that versus who we are, who God made us to be. That's limitless. I believe that's limitless. Mm -hmm. When we are walking in that fearlessly, right? Yeah. Confident in his love, going back to that scripture, <laughs> limitless. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's it. Yeah. That that's was it. You can go back and watch that. That's on that's on our page. You can watch yes. that that short interview. It was a great interview. If you want to, if you want to hear my full testimony in his link, you can go back and watch last week. Right. Um, we posted it last week. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That. That's it. That's it. I, I am so grateful. And I'm gonna just say it, make it plain because we're real and relevant. I'm so grateful that I did not listen to the voices of the people, okay? The right. people, the circle, the family, the friends, the coworkers, the people who were in your ears, okay? Mm -hmm. Especially for me at that young age, okay? Um, the fear that they were trying to instill on me that was their fear. Right. And so for those of you who are watching and who have no idea what I'm talking about, today is the 26th of October. Uh, and today is my 20th anniversary of, of obedience to God and literally being fearless in that obedience to make that step, uh, that first step to be able to come off of a GS position, which two months later in December, I would resign from the federal government to work that business full time and to do consulting um, full time for 15 yeah. years, self-employed until coming on with the, the org that I'm with now. And so that right there, had I listened to the family who were career federal employees who were saying, girl, keep that good government job, because again, fear, they were worried about stability, right? The government back then, back then was the most stable employer. So right. when you got into the government, you just didn't jump ship. That just was unheard of, especially at that age. They're like, no, you're on a career path to be SES, which, of course, people who may not understand, uh, you know, government uh, grades, you know, that's at least one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand dollars and then up. OK, annually. So that's they're looking at this like you're on that trajectory. Why would you deviate from that? Right. To do something self-employed. And I was like because this is what God's called me to do. I can't live in your fear, okay? Because your box is feared because you are seeing this government job as your provider. No, no, I take the word literally. That's not what the words say. That's the right. word says God is my provider. So you know what? If I'm obedient to God, then is he not going to be my provider? It is I'm just that simple, yes. Am, am I taking the word as the word, right? And so uh, these old Christian folks, boy, they crack you up because they read the word according to them. I mean, I'm going to just say that real and relevant, okay? They read they read the word, but they don't live the word. Mm, come on. That's the difference between religion and relationship. And that's all I'm going to say to that. Boop. There you go to that. Are, so, you, are you reading it? Or are uh, you living it? Come on. Are you in fear reading the word? Because stop. Just shut the book. Shut the book. Shut the whole book. Just 
shut the whole book. OK, because you can't be living in fear and not reading what he's saying. And how many right. times through the Bible does God say fear not? How many times? It's like hundreds of times I'm where not. he says fear not. Come on. Why would he make a point to reiterate using those two words over and over? Because and over? because even God recognized how powerful and how gripping Mm. living fearful can be Come on. to the people that he created. That's it. That's it. So y'all, that that was me. That was my testimony. It's been fearlessness for the last 20 years of living in God's direction for my career um, and not veering to what I might be interested in pathwise or or listening to family or friends, especially at that young age, who you you know you you do sometimes sometimes listen to family and friends at a young age, um, and to just go for God's obedience. And so I'm I'm grateful. So to answer that last question, the ripple effect, what would it have looked like twenty years later had I been on a job that I was not supposed to be in any longer because I was comfortable. And it was stable income, right? In a sense of security, right? Ha or go out and be fearless, right? And follow God's obedience. Yeah. 20 years later, the ripple effect is blessings upon blessings. God using me as a vessel. So y'all, please, please, please. Because as Tania always says, who's impacted by your obedience and who will be impacted by your disobedience? Real talk, real talk. And I know even in um, me choosing to let go of unhealthy relationships, mm. you know, and, and in fear, you know, fear keeping me in those unhealthy relationships, right? Right, but right. Choosing, but choosing God's love. Yes. Choosing his love. Because once again, it's a choice. Mm -hmm. choosing his love for me and knowing that his love for me would not want me and does not want me right in those environments around those people and choosing God's love. I truly believe is how I am blessed to be married for coming up on 18 years. Exactly. To the man God created me because I chose God's love. I was mm. willing to let go in spite of the mm -hmm. unknown Right. Let go of the unhealthy relationships, right? And choose choose God's love mm -hmm. and his love for me. That more than over, more than over, over and over yes. continues to prove itself to me. And to anybody else that's willing to embrace God's love, God will prove himself faithful mm. over Every and time. over again. That's that's that doctorate level. That's mm -hmm. that trust mm -hmm. level. But you know what, God? I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And I trust you to be faithful to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I trust mm -hmm. that if you are telling me to do this mm -hmm. or not do this, then I trust you to be faithful to me. That's all I got to say. Listen. <laughs> Listen. And I'm sitting here taking my own medicine right now. I'm dishing it out. I'm also taking it. This I'm show itself it. is a faith walk. Week after week, right? Every this in, this this moment by moment, we are here mm -hmm. living life real and relevant right in front of you, uh, yeah. right alongside you to know that this, this is a trust walk. This is a faith walk. This is a walk where moment by moment, again, we come to that crosswords. Are we going to... Are we going to take on fear or it's bedfellows or are we going to take on fearlessness and it's bedfellows? Which, which one are we going to take? Cause it's a crossroads every time. Yeah. Oh y'all. Yeah, Let us good. know in the comments. Mm. Come on. <laughs> what your take was Give on your tonight's topic. Yes. Share it. If you're bold enough, share mm. it in your group. Start a, start a discussion. Come on, come on. How are we all living? Are mm. we living fearful or are we living fearless for God? 
Hallelujah. Mm. Right? This is, like Wynn said, we in the last quarter of this year. Yeah. And if we're still living and breathing to even be watching this right now, then that means God's not done. At all. <laughs> and his grace is still being existed, um, extended to wait for us to embrace mm. his love in every area. In yes. every area. And he gives you a choice. Life. You know, when he says he gives you life or death, but he tells you the answer to the question, right? It's like an open book quiz that he gives you the answer to, honey. He says, choose life. Right. Right. And if, right? You, and if you're watching this and you're like, okay, this all sounds great, but where do I even start? Mm. <laughs> Go back to our videos from season one. They're yes. still there. Yes. You don't know for how much longer on Facebook, but you can still binge watch. If you can binge watch a whole season of something on Netflix, you can binge watch our shows just as yeah. easily, right? Start there. The, the episode on foundation, mm. the episode on freedom. Yes. Right? Yeah. The episode faith. even on faith. Yeah. But all of them. But if you if you can only do about two or three, let yeah. God lead you. But those mm -hmm. three right there will give you a great start. Yeah, that's a good trilogy. trilogy. That's a good trilogy, right? Good little mm -hmm. trilogy right there. It is. Right? It is. It's foundation, it is. freedom, and faith. Get some understanding. Yes, mm -hmm. get some understanding of like, okay, where where do I even start in my life? Right. There's a great place to start. So next week, when. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let everybody know what we're talking about next week. Next week's topic, <laughs> y'all, is on fakeries. Okay. And whether you understand what that is, you understand what that is. Okay. The fakeries of it all. Right. The fakeries of it all. Honey, I absolutely love in that 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 comment, the comedy group, the little the little funny group that we're in with the church funny group when it talked <laughs> about uh how the churches don't honor uh, uh dress up <laughs> honey but they talked about the dress up and being fake and i was like "Ooh, no they didn't have all of the clergy in their attires and in their they was like but we don't you know we don't dress up and be fake you know but but you do every sunday but you didn't hear that from me i'm just saying you didn't the fakeries of it all comes come hang out with us next week because we're gonna talk about it we're gonna talk about you Okay. The yes, we are. Yes, we are. Like we said, we will continue to respond to your comments and mm -hmm. your questions. So our um our comments section of each of our videos remains open. So you can continue to comment, uh, continue to post your questions, continue to share this as God leads you <laughs> with somebody. <laughs> You know, <laughs> something that you know. Oh, let the Lord lead you, honey. Yeah, let him lead you. Let him lead you. <laughs> but, but truly, we appreciate every person that is following us and following this show, not following us, following this show. Yeah. Right? We appreciate it because we are just out here. Ooh, we just out here with God's love, mm -hmm. living fearless with this show. That's, that's all this that's all this is. That's all we can tell you. Yes. So next week, Fakeries will be right back here at 8 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if you are on the East Coast, we are 8 p.m. Okay. Just that's all you need to know right there. If you're not on the East Coast, then you're not 8 p.m. Okay. Yes. Yes. And we're still taking all your suggestions for topics. As of right now, we're still sticking with the letter F. We are, um, but even we if it doesn't start with F, creativeness, and there's certain yeah. things we can't cover, y'all. This is an inspirational show, but put some good, you know, <laughs> ideas. Give us some variety. We'd love to be able to deep dive. And if you're watching us on the replay, please, 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 we want to hear your feedback. We go, we get the uh, notifications, and I love that people are watching it uh, and sharing it. Um, yeah. And people, we you know, we might not have known we're watching it. Give us a little comment every now and again, and we're like, "Oh, okay, we didn't even know you was watching us." So shout out. <laughs> Hopefully, you're being inspired, and um, and that we're the vessel that God has chose us for this season to share with you some real and some relevant. Yes. So until next week, 
Y'all keep listening. That's it. See, we'll you, see next you next week. Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye. Good night.